Hello sewing friends. Today's video is going to be a little different. No tutorials today, just a vlog of my sewing week and some reflections to go with it. I did do quite a bit of sewing this week, but everything I did is what I would consider sewing chores. Nothing exciting, just things that need doing. Things that usually get left to the very last. Like making these washable makeup pad removers. I had been planning to get to these for forever, and finally did. I like to make my own skincare products, and these pads are so much better than the disposable ones. I didn't want to make a full tutorial on these because I feel like there are so many out there, and I don't think that I would be adding any new information. As it was, I had to serge these twice because Little Penny decided to play with the knobs on my serger, and although the top side looked fine, the looper threads on the bottom were really loose. After I got all those done, though, I was pulling the serger threads through to lock them in, and I reflected on why I enjoy hand sewing so much. I think it's because even though it's a repetitive and maybe mundane task, and I know a lot of people really don't like it, I still have to be present in order to do it. It makes it sort of its own meditation. I also had fabric sitting around earmarked for more tank tops. It's super hot right now in Calgary, and so I made sure to get these done. I've made tutorials on tank tops before, but... But isn't it funny how when we have things to do for practical reasons, it can be harder to get them done? But, even though I know it's nothing glamorous, I know that since I wear tank tops so frequently, that making these will mean I'm wearing my own makes more often. Certainly I could have gotten five tank tops for the same price that I spent on fabric for the three I made if I had shopped a clearance section in a department store, but they would have been too short, and I wouldn't have been able to feel proud that I was wearing my own make. I also needed to dye a skirt that I had gotten from my mother-in-law. The funny thing about this is that it was supposed to be black, and <laughs> it came out purple. I did use the correct dye and color fixative, but my mother-in-law had previously washed this with highly scented fabric softener. Often those are silicone based. As we have somebody in our household that's allergic to scents, I stripped the skirt as best I could when I got it, but it's really hard to get that stuff off of cotton. Actually, I have pretty much had to stop thrifting because of this problem. I knew that the skirt still had a bit of a coating on it because there was still perfume, but I dyed it anyways. <laughs> so I got a purple skirt, but you know what? I'm not mad because the purple works. While I was going through this week of sewing chores, I was also reading a book called The Poetry Pharmacy. It's an anthology put together by William Seagart. And in it, I stumbled across a poem by John Burnside that fits so perfectly into my week. And I hope you'll indulge me while I share it with you. The poem is called Of Gravity and Light. What we need most, we learn from the menial tasks. The novice raking the sand in Buddhist texts, or sweeping leaves, his hands chilled to the bone, while understanding hovers out of reach. The changeling in a folktale, chopping logs, poised at the dizzy edge of transformation. And everything they do is gravity, swaying above the darkness of the well to haul the bucket in, guiding the broom, finding the body's kinship with the earth beneath their feet, the lattice of a world where nothing turns or stands outside the hole. And when the insight comes, they carry on with what's at hand. The gravel path, the fire, knowing the soul is no more difficult than water or the fig tree by the well that stood for decades, barren and inert, till every branch was answered in the stars. I had a lot on my mind this week, I had a lot to think about, and these sort of minor sewing tasks and things that needed to be done just because they needed to be done kept my week moving forward. I think that's sort of a beautiful purpose of mundane tasks, is that when you don't know what to do with yourself, it's something to make you move forward. And if we can find a little bit of mindfulness and maybe a meditation in it, then these things can become really beautiful in and of themselves. And when we focus on finding the joy and meditation in tasks like these, then we more easily recognize those times where we can take a moment to find joy. Like this morning, I stopped on my walk to pick some early Saskatoon berries. Only a couple of days before, they weren't ready. There was a robin who was very upset with me the whole time I was picking, but I made sure to leave lots behind for him.
It was so lovely this morning to sit outside in clothes that I had had a hand in creating, eating fresh Saskatoons and drinking tea with a good book while listening to the kiddos play. I hope that you're able to find a meditation or joy in something small this week, in your crafting, in your chores, or maybe in a good book. See you next time.